Working Cows Podcast, episode 190. Welcome to the podcast that gives producers a platform to discuss and share paradigm-challenging practices. Practices that have increased the effectiveness of their operation and the joy that their families have received from this lifestyle. Howdy, everybody. It's Clay Conry, host of the Working Cows podcast, here with another episode for you guys, powered by the Global Ag Network. Very excited to be joined today by Craig Thompson and Gordon Decker. Um, Craig is one of the founders of the Rockside Ranch in Etna, California, uh, Northern California, and they are doing some lengthy recovery periods. I have been in ministry for about 15 years, 14 and a half years right now. And uh, one of the ministries that I was involved in, we had a very good relationship with a local recovery um, center. And they there was a lot of people in the church where I was on in ministry who uh, worked in uh, addiction recovery. And they said, as people who were recovering uh, addicts and alcoholics themselves said that oftentimes some of those short stay um, places are, are more like a spin dry where you're just barely sober when you leave. And so to see something like Rockside Ranch where it is a eight month program where those guys come in, they get sober, but not only that, they get connected to the family of God through a local church and they get, can they get some life skills, um, some trades training, some, um, money management and those kinds of things. So it's a, it's a big, uh, holistic person wide vision that Rockside Ranch has and some exciting new developments. Rockside Ranch has, uh, a new location in Western South Dakota as well, near New Underwood. And so we're going to talk about what is Rockside Ranch? What's the vision behind it? How does it work? What does a day in the life of of one of the guys in the program look like? And how, how are they, what kind of fruit are they seeing from this? So really excited to be joined today by Craig Thompson and Gordon Decker of Rockside Ranch. Craig, Gordon, thanks for joining me today on the Working Cows podcast. Thanks for having us. Yes, sir. It's uh, been been good getting to know you just a little bit today, Craig. You uh, uh, you've been involved with the what would you call it a ministry in California? Yeah, yeah. And Rockside Ranch. What's the what's the goal? What's the the model that you guys are following there? Yeah. So Rockside Ranch is it's an eight month residential program for young men who are in crisis, who want to get out of crisis, and um, who are willing to put in the hard work to, to get out of crisis. What is, what does that process look like? What is the, the hard work involved in that? And how are you guys approaching that? Yeah. So the first, I mean, the big first step is being willing to, to come to the program. So we're on a small farm in Northern California, pretty rural area. And a lot of the guys that are coming to the ranch, they've got to move there to get there. And so when they're willing to, to, to take eight months and uh, to move to somewhere that's totally unknown. Um, that's a huge first step. And then to, to give it their best every single day, you know, for eight months, getting up in the morning, going out and feeding animals, um, living in a house with a bunch of other guys, um, going through classes and, and really just, you know, um, kind of putting down their desires, um, in order to, to live a better life, to, to go where they want to go. What's the goal, uh, for the guy kind of walking out eight months after he's been there? What's, what what are you guys hoping, uh, is, is true for him? Basically, I mean, the biggest thing is that they're hireable and can get a job, keep a job, move up, you know, in their workplace. So when they come to the ranch, um, they're, they're in crisis transitioning, um, once they're at the ranch, they're getting equipped with the, the skills that they are looking for. And then when they leave the ranch, they're ready to step into a job and start to really thrive in both their life and their work. How, how'd you get started doing this? 
Yeah. So um, probably about 15 years ago, I started thinking about it. And uh, my wife was really, she also had a similar vision. We weren't married at the time. And so it's really what brought us together. And then um, in 2010, we got married and shortly afterwards started to, to try to see this dream come alive. And the community that we're in is a, it's a small town in Northern California called Aetna, about uh, seven, 800 people. And, um, and the, the whole Scott Valley community um, has just really been, they, they've embraced us and embraced this, this idea and have supported it, you know, from day one and, and really made all the difference. And yeah, I, I talk about the, uh, the importance of kind of that piece of having both you and your wife on the same page, because mm-hmm. this is not easy work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, the, the idea that both of you kind of feel it or see it as a calling is, that's a, a big part or a big advantage, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And then as the, you know, the, the years have gone by, we've, we've had staff come in and be involved and other people who said, Hey, I want to be a part of this, or I want to do this. And, and oftentimes there weren't jobs open for anybody to, to come and step in, but people came anyway and said, you know, we'll figure out a way to make this work. And so it has, you know, it was something that, yes, you know, the Lord really kind of gave me a picture of what this could be, gave my wife a picture of what this could be, gave this community that we live in a picture of what it could be, and then gave others, you know, and so it's just been this kind of um, multiplied um, vision and, and effort from so many people. Walk me through the agricultural side of what you guys are doing there, uh, the the land and the animal side of what you guys are doing there. Yeah. Yeah, so we're on, we're on 100 acres. It's split up about 30 pasture, 60 woods, and 10 acres of you know uh, more infrastructure. The the pasture right now is all dry land, and um, and then in the woods we've got uh, pine cedars, um, we've got uh, some oaks, and so we run our pigs through the woods. We raise about 150 or so pigs a year, run them through the woods. Um, we raise chickens on the pasture. And so we've got a layer flock of anywhere between twelve and sixteen hundred, depending on the time of year. And um, we raise some meat birds and some meat turkeys also. And what is the what's the 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 model or the paradigm of management with the animals? Uh, how are the how are the uh, the pigs interfacing with the forest? How are the uh, the the meat birds and the layers interfacing with the with the pasture? Yeah. Yeah. So it's all a pasture based system or, you know, for our pigs, it's all, they're all outdoor. And, um, so the pigs really help because when they go through the woods, they help with fuel reduction. Forest fire is a huge threat in our area. And so as pigs go through, they just take all of the, the understory down to the, to the soil and they're turning it up, turning it under. So we noticed that when the pigs have gone through an area the next year, we actually have grass growing in the forest, which is unusual for for the forest where we are. And um, and then on the pasture side with the chickens, um, the you know the chickens are being moved every day um, to fresh ground, and so they're they're we are using kind of a hoop house coop design, and so the manure is falling right onto the to the soil, so we don't um, need to manage manure because it's being mm-hmm. you know used right where it needs to be. So. Mm. And the the pigs um, are they impacting every acre every year, or are you you know are they on every acre every year? No, no, they're not. We move them to different parts of the woods, and um, and we only have pigs seasonally, so we really you know try to move them as much as we can. Um, and uh, and so you know when they've chewed down an area, um, we move them to the next, and depends on the size of the group and and the conditions and how, how long it's been since we've had pigs there before, um, of how long they'll be in one spot. Mm-hmm. And so are you buying them as wieners or are you, mm-hmm. are you, okay. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned earlier, uh, having a boar, mm-hmm. uh, in sow. So are you doing some, we used to Pharaoh Pharaoh to finish. Yeah. We yeah. used to do that. And then we switched about two years ago okay. to, to just buying wean pigs. Okay. Yeah. So kind of a, uh, just bring them in, get them to finish, and then mm-hmm. and and then uh, you have to send them off to be butchered. Mm-hmm. They come home and go in the freezer, and and they're sold out of the freezer. Then, mm-hmm. yeah, gotcha. Yeah. And how have you developed that market? 
Yeah, so it's been ongoing, and uh, we have we have a, a good support from our local community, and then we go out and do deliveries throughout Northern California, and then we also um, will ship boxes uh, anywhere in the West Coast too. Sure. So I guess um, all of those questions kind of back to the bigger point of Rockside Ranch and its its mission, um, primary mission being mm-hmm. kind of. Uh, rehabilitating people. <laughs> yeah. um, can you talk about how you've seen the process of seeing people work the land impact, you know, help that process of rehabilitation in those people? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think one of the biggest things is just the dignity that comes with mm-hmm. being outside and working with animals and producing food and, and so, you know, we see in students when they go out there and, and day one, they come to the ranch and they go out and they collect eggs and they realize I just collected 600 eggs. That's a lot of eggs. That's mm. going to feed a lot of people. Mm. And so just that immediate connection to, wow, these hands just contributed something really special. Mm. Um, and then when they even get to to take those eggs and package them and then be a part of a uh, selling those eggs to a customer who then gives direct feedback on how, you know, they're going to take those eggs home and feed them to their family. There's just this, this real good feedback loop that's developed in farming. Mm. And, uh, and for the guys to, to feel that and to feel that, you know, that at the end of the day, I'm tired and it's because I was contributing to the food supply, you know, in this country, Mm. um, albeit on a really small scale, um, but in a really transform transformational way. I think that's huge. Mm. And then just the, the, I mean, really therapeutic elements of, of being around animals, right? Just, um, the, the care that, that is required to take a chick from a day old chick Mm. to a full grown layer. And, um, and the fact that, you know, they're, I love watching the guys go in to the brooder and they care about those mm-hmm. chicks so much. And so they will, they'll be building up the, you know, the wood shavings in the areas where the chicks are getting out and, uh, and ushering these little baby chicks over under the heat lamp, you know, stuff like that, where you just see these, these characteristics of compassion and mm-hmm. care for, for others at the time as animals, but then mm-hmm. that translate to other people, you know? Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I think, um, a lot of what you're just talking about is uh, kind of not being the center of the universe anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. like, especially guys in crisis, yeah. you know, you talked in the presentation that you gave here and uh, again, thanks for coming out and sharing, sharing the ministry with the, with the guys that showed up today. It was, it was a great presentation. And, you know, you talked about basic getting basic needs met, mm-hmm. you know, and once they've got a few basic needs met, then they can start to think about, uh, you know, dignity, value, and worth, yeah. which, you know, ultimately comes because we're made in God's image. Yeah. Uh, but when when your day in, day out is spent in survival mode, you don't get to think about, you know, uh, dignity, value, and worth. You don't get to think about work that matters. You don't get to f- think about any of those things. Yeah. And so when you, when you have work that matters, part of Part of it is I'm not the center of the universe. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, you know, I'm contributing to something bigger than myself. I'm, uh, you know, I, I, as I myself eat of two eggs, you know, fried and butter every, every morning, Yeah, free range eggs, fried and butter every morning. And, uh, you know, I, and since I got my cholesterol and, and those things, those numbers back recently, I cut out the bread. Yeah. (laughs) The doctor said I should cut out the eggs. I, I, I. I said I'm gonna do like a little it. n equals one in experimentation and and cut out the bread and see how we do for this year. I'll so go good. back and try it. But anyways, that's but I mean it is. I mean it's a powerful a powerful protein source. Eggs and you know and chicken and all those things. So, um, what is the what's the, what's a day in the life of somebody at Rockside Ranch as a, a resident? What's a day in in their life look like? Yeah, it's a good question. So we get up and um, have a short devotion. They go out at seven o'clock and feed animals for about an hour. Come back in at eight, have breakfast. Um, from nine to ten, we do a Bible study. From ten to one, we do projects. 
projects range from all kinds of different things, um, farm projects to trade projects to uh, really just anything that's going to going to train job skills. So the, that project time is kind of a workshop time. Um, but then it's also an, an, uh, a time where the guys can get exposed to different potential career paths. So if they enjoy one of the projects that we do in a specific trade, that's a signal of, to them of maybe this is something I can pursue. So that 10 to 1 slot is, is for farm projects or others. Um, 1 to 2 o'clock, they have lunch. And then 2 to 4, they have class. Classes range anywhere from budgeting, financial management stuff, to resumes, to uh, anger management or stress management or conflict resolution, just all kinds of life skills and job skills. And um, and really, we look at the current group of guys that's there and say, you know, what is it that is going to really be beneficial? And we'll focus on that. Four o'clock, they go back out and collect eggs, feed and water the animals. 4.30, we do a group workout. Five o'clock dinner and, or break actually, and then six o'clock is dinner. Um, seven o'clock to to the end of the night is an evening session that's usually more social and casual. Mm-hmm. So they're oh go ahead go ahead. Their day is is just super programmed mm-hmm. from you know six six thirty in the morning all the way till eight nine o'clock at night. And there's that one break in the middle. Uh, other than that, it's it's pretty back to back. Yeah. How do you? Um are, are, is is your family uh, interfacing with them throughout the day? Are you eating any? Is your family eating the meal those meals with them, or are they? Is the staff taking care of the the meal times with them? How's that? Yeah, so it rotates around quite a bit, and depending on the day, we do an all staff and student meal um, Tuesday dinners, and so that's a big meal, you know, with thirty plus people there usually. Um, but, uh, but throughout the day, yeah, everybody is just kind of coming and going. And so the different staff members are interacting at different times. Um, my kids are always outside, you know, riding bikes and hollering at the guys, you know, Hey, how you doing? And, and, uh, then we go into the house, you know, all throughout the day. So it's really, I mean, it is really community focused and, uh, and the relationship piece is such a big part of it. And then depending on the day and what's going on and, and where the guys are at, just, uh, just, you know, attitude wise, um, kind of depends on how much interaction takes place in what way. Tell me about the, the community piece, uh, and the interface with, with a specific local church or, or the local church in general, at least in Etna, Etna, where you guys are at. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the partnership between our local church and the ranch and community there is essential. And, and we have such a huge, um, support group, you know, from that church that really pours into the students, um, pours into the staff and just the whole ministry. So, um, so yeah, the guys go, we all go to to church on Sunday morning together, um, throughout the week, different church members stop by. I love it when the, Mm. you know, church members just stop by unannounced, walk in, you know, sometimes they have a plate of cookies, which always goes over well. <laughs> Other times they just want to sit down and talk and, and hang out. Sometimes they go out and, you know, pick up a shovel or a hammer and do something with the guys. Mm. Um, but just that, like, just kind of casual environment that really goes to, to communicate a lot to the students, too, of just, you know, the community wants to be involved. They mm. want to, they want to love these guys. And, um, and so there's a, there's a, there's always a, a bit of a, um, when, a, when a new guy comes to the ranch, they're just trying to figure out, are these people trustworthy? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. is this, um, are they looking out for me or not? And, um, and a staff were there every day and they see, Hey, we're there regardless of if it's 10 o'clock at night and there's a, there's a need or six o'clock in the morning and there's a need, somebody's going to be there to meet it. But when the community gets involved, that's a, that's a whole nother level of, of, um, kind of commitment, you know, that, that they see these people, they don't have any reason to be here other than Mm. they, they want to, you know, it's, it's cool to see local church take ownership of it. Right. I mean, that's what you're you're talking about, right? They're, they're, they're bought in, they, they believe in the vision and they want to see it accomplish, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's end goal. Mm -hmm. Is there a typical, 
uh, story that comes along with these guys from Rockside Ranch. I mean, I think of I, I worked in the inner city of Milwaukee uh, during Bible school mm-hmm. in in the rescue mission. We had a youth program where we would go out. It was kind of a old school model, but we would go out and bus in one to two hundred kids uh, two or three times a week and bring wow. them in and uh, you know uh, feed them in in some cases. Some nights we were feeding them a meal, doing sports programming with them, doing Bible studies with them, stuff like that. So um, I, in a lot of those situations, kind of back to what you were saying, these guys are saying, are, are these people for real? Are they trustworthy? Um, you know, they'd never had anybody else look out for them. You know, it's always been me look out for me, and I don't trust anybody else around me. And And so it's, you know, it's kind of a, there's a, I'm sure there's a process of them feeling out, you know, the, the people around and seeing, are they, are they here for what I can, what they can get out of me or are they here to invest in me? Mm -hmm. So is there a, is there a typical story or is it everybody's story is unique and and different? And, uh, you know, how, what have you seen in the, in the years you've been doing this? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, the guys come from all kinds of different backgrounds too. And so it's really interesting, you know, to, to see some of the guys come with some real tremendous family support and some of the guys, you know, and they've, they've just found their way into a crisis of some kind. Um, some of the guys come from, you know, they, they've lost all contact with everybody that they've ever known. And they're really isolated and alone when they come to the ranch. Um, but I think no matter what, when they come to the ranch, they're trying to, yeah, they're, they are trying to feel like, A, yeah, are the staff trustworthy? And and is this a place that is going to care about me? Um, and then B, are these other guys trustworthy? Because here I'm sharing this house with them. And mm. and uh, and so for for us and for the, the community at the ranch to really be trying to build up that brotherhood, you know, that when they step into this program, that this is a this is a group that's not just looking out for each other individually, you know, if we're I'm looking out for me and you're looking out for you. And if, if mm-hmm. you win, I lose. So mm-hmm. I want to win. So you lose, mm. but it's actually, we're, we're, you know, doing so much to, to try to build a culture where, no, if you win, we win and celebrate together. Mm. Right. I mean, it's the whole, the whole idea of mourn with those who mourn and rejoice with mm. those who rejoice of just that we are, we are trying to, um, to be that community right. that, um, I've been fortunate to have in my life at, at different times that has sustained me through difficulty. Um, and, and if we can be that for those guys, it's, it's a real neat thing. Yeah. The word compassion literally means to suffer with. Okay. You know? mm-hmm. So you enter into their suffering. Mm-hmm. So, and then enter into their rejoicing as well, yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, Gordon, you've been there, um, as a, you know, somebody who kind of just walked into it, uh, not not having not having been there on the ground for for like Craig has, and so what did you what did you see? What was your experience kind of coming in fresh? Oh, uh, thanks for asking that question. It was uh, so I originally went out there just to I was involved in the workforce program, which is a workforce development. The graduates of the Rockside Ranch having a place where they can continue on in employment opportunities, and I went there to meet Craig. I've had great conversations with them heard about the ranch, but when I went there and saw the church in action and saw the environment that they had created for these students and for the staff, it was such a loving, caring place. I I just was amazed. And I I would have, I just would have loved to have stayed there and gone through the program myself. (laughs) And, and I was able to share the journey with another man from our community. And we just, we just soaked it up. It was just amazing. And, and we just, the fellowship and the camaraderie is just off the charts. Mm, very cool. So are those, are they coming in all throughout the year? There's no like enrollment period or anything. You'll take anybody any day of the year for an eight month stint. Yeah, that's, that's where we're at right now, which is, uh, which is kind of new for us in the last few years. We used to only run seasonally before we had a good facility mm. for winter housing. And uh, so now if we have spots and a guy calls up, we try to get them, there as quick as possible, mm. you know, within a week, there's a real narrow window when a guy's in crisis and they decide, Hey, right. I want help. There's a real narrow window of either deciding I actually don't want help. I'm going to do this on my own or of finding help somewhere else. And, uh, and if they find, you know, our goal is to, to set them up with some somewhere that's successful for them. And, uh, and if that's at Rockside, let's get you here as quick as possible. 
Um, if that's somewhere else, that's fantastic. But uh, what we don't want is for them to slide back into old habits and and get out of a place where they want help. You know, mm-hmm. and now yeah. that now they're back to square one. And it's not not at all fair <laughs> to put you guys in the same category as a typical recovery ministry. Uh, but you know, we, we talked a little bit earlier today or a lot earlier today. And, uh, we, you know, I, I've been around recovery ministry and recovery programs, uh, not, not necessarily ministries as well. And the success rate for that is pretty low. And, um, you know, some of the people that had been through recovery and had made it through recovery successfully and, and had recovered, uh, from their, their dependencies, um, would always tell me that, that typical recovery 21, 28 day program, whatever it is, is, is kind of like spin dry. Like Mm -hmm. you're just barely sober and then you're back out into the world, old friends, old patterns, old habits. And it's, you know, a matter of weeks before the same, same choices are made. Uh, and so, you know, we, you, you hear stats like seven out of 10 people on the recidivism rate for, you know, both, uh, incarceration and, and recovery Mm -hmm. type stuff and and so with an eight month program um first of all do you have an idea of how many have been through the program how many have graduated so to speak and then kind of what the what the i don't for lack of a better word success rate <laughs> yeah. has been yeah so it's been really cool to see i mean the guys when they uh, when they are willing to do this full scale you know top to bottom life change right and they're willing to um first of all leave the environment of crisis and that's such a huge component of restoration is getting out of that crisis environment and then even better is after they've gone through the the restoration part to to go to some place new to really begin fresh um so when guys are willing to do that the lord really shows up and, and honors that. And so we've seen that, that the guys that have graduated from the ranch, uh, it's, it's over 80%, you know, it's uh, right around like 83% or so of those guys are employed or in school right now. And so that's going back nine years. Um, and, and so, you know, for them to, to really see not only uh, over a long period of time, over eight months, that, wow, I can do this. I can get up every day and make my bed and, uh, and go out and go to work and show up on time and come in and go through classes. And, and I mean, every single day is just building that capacity more and more to give um, full confidence when they graduate that I can do this because I have shown myself for the last eight months that I can do this. You know, yep. and it's, I think it makes, makes all the difference that that time period is so essential. We used to try to say, okay, well, you could graduate a little bit early if you were at this stage or, mm. and we just have learned over the years that eight months is so critical. Yep. Yeah. The Milwaukee Rescue Mission had a men's ministry program that was similar. It was a in-house deal, uh, you know, kind of come in, cut ties mm-hmm. and, Spend. I don't. I think theirs was a six month program or something. Maybe, yeah. but a great program. And basically, they they kind of always said our recidivism rate is the polar opposite. Like seventy mm-hmm. percent recidivism rate in recovery and in incarceration. We've had seventy percent. Yes, guys. You know, years out of the program, still employed, and still, yes. you know, free. So it's when when you're willing to take that time, mm-hmm. when you're willing to invest that time, it's uh, it it is a a a huge piece of the success. And I think that, you know, where the, a lot of those guys were from Milwaukee, a lot of them coming into the homeless shelter for a period of time before they get into the men's ministry, then I think a lot of them end up back in Milwaukee to still yeah. see that level of success is pretty big because those, those, like I said, those old, old friends and habits and patterns mm-hmm. are so easy to get back into. So it's, it's a testimony, I think, to this kind of model of, of ministry. Um, where are you guys? They're coming from all over, right? I mean, mm-hmm. all over the United States. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, how are they? How are they hearing about the ministry? How are they hearing about the opportunity? 
Yeah. Almost all of the guys that come to the ranch are, they're told about the ministry from somebody else, you know, so it's word of mouth. Um, so usually it's a parent or grandparent or family member, somebody in their church, um, somebody who, you know, a teacher, somebody who who's knows them and is invested in them and, and really cares for them personally and their restoration. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I don't have exact numbers, but I would guess it's it's well over eighty percent of the guys who come to the ranch um, were were told about the ranch from somebody in their life that cared about them. What's the? I mean, is this is this model um, something you can replicate other places? Yeah, and really, that's the dream, right? Because we don't have a vision or or a hope of growing the Etna Ranch to be serving. 30, 40, you know, a hundred guys. Um, our goal is to keep it really small. I mean, that's, I think the essence really of that community is that you're known and that you Mm. are in relationship. And, um, and so the more guys that we get, the harder that becomes. But I think, you know, pairing it with a farm is such a beautiful thing because there's farms everywhere, Mm. you know, farms and ranches are all across this country. And, um, and wrapped up inside of every single one of those farms and ranches is this wisdom of the ages, you know, <laughs> that is really, really uh, beautiful and and uh, so needed um, by all of us. And so when you get a guy who's coming in, who's of the mindset of wanting to learn and, and take on new skills, and you bring him to a farm that is a wellspring of skills and of, of knowledge and wisdom... Um, the, the two things just combine in it and, and it works really well. So can it be replicated? Yes. And that's really our goal, um, is to see this model replicated on farms and ranches anywhere in the country that, uh, a landowner, uh, really likes this idea is willing to, to give a lot of time and, and energy to these guys. Um, but is, is gonna, on the other side of that, see, lives restored and and guys you know walking in freedom from their addictions and from their their crises um and it's it's that's the hope (laughs) yeah and you are actively pursuing an expansion of that of that kind right now correct yeah yeah so this would be the first uh of the next ranches right so so we've had the the ranch in etna for about 10 years and um so this this next ranch would be the first time that we would be replicating the model. And uh, so it's just something that's in the works right now in South Dakota here. And we are really praying about it and, and trying to um, go through the process of what that would look like. And, and so hopefully uh, pretty soon we'll be able to say it's happening. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's, is it, it's not necessarily like a franchise model or anything like that. Is it, I mean, what, what's the, What's the expansion model as far as Rockside is concerned and, and being connected to it? How, how does that work? Yeah. So our, our thing is basically, I mean, we didn't, we didn't make all this stuff up, right? This, this has been heavily um, led by the Lord, and so it's not ours to keep. Um, so as we've gone through and, and talked about expanding or, or equipping other farms with what we've learned, our goal would be to, to minimize the replication of mistakes that we made, right? And just uh, maximize the, the, um, the getting the program off the ground as quickly as possible. Mm. And so it would really depend on, on a farmer or rancher and what they're looking for. If they say, Hey, I want to keep farming and ranching, but I'm okay with using my land for this purpose. Then maybe it's, it turns into Rockside Ranch, South Dakota, um, on a piece of ground that is owned by a farmer or rancher here. Um, or if there's another farmer and rancher somewhere else who says, I want to, I want to use this model, but I want to keep it, um, kind of in my, our, our family farm name or anything like that. Great. Mm, like sure. that's not important, you know, to, <laughs> to us, what the, the overwhelming need of, of restoration for guys in crisis is, uh, it seems endless, right? Mm-hmm. I'd love it to end. Right. And so it's only going to end when, um, this type of a thing is happening coast to coast. Right. Yeah. If I could just add a little color Absolutely. on that, I would uh, say my my background is law enforcement and military. And I, I in 20 years, I saw a lot of men in crisis. And I, I really never had a heart until I accepted the Lord about eight years ago 
uh, to, to really understand what was causing the crisis and how to address that. Mm. And having seen the model that Rockside Ranch has and the way they're doing this, once I toured that facility in January, I was like, this, this needs to start in Western South Dakota somewhere. And it could start all over the nation and in multiple places. And I just don't see, I see so many opportunities for men to have that opportunity to grow and to learn life in a different way. And that that's part of my testimony too, is when I was a teenager, my dad was in the air force and I grew up on air force bases and I didn't have a chance to be on a farm until a neighbor friend started taking me to a farm and teaching me skills that I wouldn't have had an opportunity to learn. And so now this opportunity kind of come back to agriculture and, and what I miss from law enforcement military is the camaraderie. And that's what Rockside is creating is that mm. shared relationship, that, that relational ministry of, uh, I want to share life with you. I, I, I care about, I truly care about you. And I, and I want you to be the man that God created you to be. Mm. And so you're creating space for God to work in that. And you're showing what the church truly is. And that's, what's just so powerful once you've experienced that. Yeah, let's talk about some of the practicalities of actually seeing this replicated uh, around the country. Um, we're talking to ranchers from all over America and some quite a few outside of America too. But uh, but you know what you you mentioned kind of a a piece of land, uh, a rancher with a with a heart to see this happen, um, some facilitators funding. Kind of wa- walk me through what's it take to get a guy through the program. Um, you know, from, from the, you know, a, a task for them to, to do, you know, but also from a, a monetary perspective, what's that kind of take? What's, what are you guys looking at for an investment and how is that funding happening? Yeah. Yeah. So the funding for the program really comes from a uh, large part is individual donors. So people who believe in the guys believe in, in what's happening at the ranch. And so they want to be a part of that. So almost, I mean, we're over 60% of our revenue is coming from, um, from outside supporters. Some of them have never met the guys. Um, some of them are related to past students and who want to pay that forward. Um, you know, for us right now, well, residential ministry is incredibly expensive. Um, most rehabs that are out there, and we're nowhere near this, but most rehabs are, are 7500 a month. And, um, and so it's just, it's prohibitive, you know? And so here we're talking to guys who are on the streets sometimes, have nothing, um, or who are coming from, uh, from a place where they have family support or other things. And, and uh, so we try to keep the, our costs down as much as we can, but it's still very expensive. So we don't, we don't bill for our services. What we do is we just have a conversation with family and we say, hey, um, this is how much it costs us per student to, to run this program. Um, are you, what, what do you think you can or can't contribute? We don't talk about that with the student at all um, because they're usually looking for a reason not to come, right? They're trying to, they're, they're really apprehensive about um, investing that much time in um, a restoration program. So on top of that, if there's a big monetary investment, then they go, okay, A, I'm not worth that. Uh, mm. Or B, uh, you're going to put all that money into, into this program, and then I'm going to go out and I'm going um, to fail, and it's going to be a waste. So they're not in a place of really believing that they have what it takes to change. Um, so we don't have those conversations with the students at all. We talk with families. They give us what they can afford. And, uh, and we don't take finances into account when we accept a, a student. So regardless of what they are able to contribute, if they're a good fit for the program, we feel like the Lord is saying, this is a good guy to, to bring on. He's coming to the ranch. Mm. So how that would replicate over, you know, when we're talking to, um, this, this potential partnership in here in South Dakota, um, what we're saying is, listen, you know, do you want to start a nonprofit that would that would oversee this, or do you want to come under this existing nonprofit, Rockside Ranch, that could um, could do a lot of the a fundraising, b uh, administrative stuff, and try to be as efficient as possible in the replication? And um, so that's I think the the best way to go. Um, you know, running a nonprofit is a lot of paperwork and. It's not necessary that everybody do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but any way that 
that um, Rockside could be a support to the to the landowner and to the potential site um, we're all in for. And so that could look as little as, hey, here's the program that we run. You know, call us if you need anything. Or it could look as involved as, no, we're actually overseeing the ministry and you're overseeing your farm, which is something you've always done and are really good at. We're not going to be good at running your farm, um, but would it help if we ran the nonprofit side of things? And if I could just add on to that too, because it's been an evolution and, and we are the first expansion opportunity for first Rockside Ranch here in South Dakota. And as we've been working through this, it's not the amount of acres that you need. It's the space that you need for the men to, to, to live in community mm. and to have enough projects and things that they can do to experience uh, job and life skills that they wouldn't get otherwise. So just to add on to that, it just doesn't, it's not a certain amount of land. It's just a space to be able to do this mm. is what you're, is what I see as the need. Yep. What's the, I mean, what percentage of the caloric intake for the critters uh, at Rockside Ranch actually is produced by Rockside Ranch? I mean, it's grass and, mm-hmm. and those things. Is it, you're raising two critters that don't really convert grass a lot. You yeah. know, they get a lot of supplemental feed. So are you buying in a lot of feed to for them? Yeah, we do. We buy in a lot of grain, both for the chickens and the pigs. Um, but uh, this year we're we're getting lambs in a few weeks. And uh, so as the pasture health in, improves, then we'll start to bring on some more grass eaters. Some ruminants. Types. Yeah. <laughs> so so the, I guess that that question, you know, that I'm asking is, is more about um, the nature of the work that those guys are doing and the the fact that it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, kind of back to that idea. It doesn't necessarily have to be a bunch of acres necessarily. Mm-hmm. It's, it's more about they're having these everyday chores and mm-hmm. tasks. And then, you know, I think what you said earlier, maybe two hours of their day is spent on chores. And then maybe two, uh, another two hours of their day is spent on, on ranch related, you know, infrastructure projects or whatever. And then, really the rest of their day is pretty well programmed for them from the time they get up to the time they go to bed around, um, you know, connecting connect connection or opening the opportunity for a connection with Jesus mm-hmm. and, and life skills. Yep. Is that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that egg layers is, is such a cool, um, uh, part of the program because it's that daily feedback cycle, right? right? <laughs> so when you, you know, when for our pigs, for instance, yeah. it's months long. And so there, there are some guys who come in and uh, they don't see the beginning and the end of, of the hogs. Um, but with the chickens, with the layers, they're going out and collecting eggs every single day. And so I think that that's a really neat enterprise to stack on top of an existing enterprise. They don't take up that much space. Um, they don't require that much land, um, and and it can really stack on top of, especially cattle farms, you know, cattle ranches, and uh, and it can it can really yeah, you get east of the hundredth meridian their farms again. So okay, don't good. worry about it. Good deal. <laughs> um, but uh, but just you know to to stack that on top of an existing um, existing operation can work really well. Yeah, I interview. I have interviewed guys from. Uh, let me see five or six continents and uh no five continents i haven't interviewed anybody in south america yet but anyways i've interviewed and i interviewed a guy from england and i called i introduced him as as running a ranch yeah. and all the guys from england commented on that post laughing saying this is a farm it's not a ranch so <laughs> yeah the, the terminology it's it's tough with all uh, different different parts of the world yeah uh but you know you talk about uh, about egg layers you know they are um they're fantastic critter for sanitizing pastures as mm-hmm. far as uh they love they love to be two or three di- two or three days behind a set of cows cleaning up manure eating all the bugs out of that manure and they break that parasite cycle that you are a lot of times fighting yeah. with your with your ruminant animals and they uh, are doing and they're doing very well with that they're producing uh healthier more nutrient dense food uh, as a result of being on a diet of manure and grain, yep. <laughs> you I know, know. <laughs> yeah, and and Amazing. on top of all that, on top of all that, it's like you said a daily, a daily feedback loop, and and I just think it's you know like you said, farming ranching is the perfect, uh, perfect enterprise 
for somebody who has been in crisis, who has been in survival mode, who has been in a mode of I'm the center of the universe. If I don't look out for me, nobody else is going to, mm-hmm. uh, to, to kind of open up their world and see I'm contributing directly to the food chain, you know, to the food, food cycle. And, and again, layers are just another unique or one of the more unique critters that does, does that every day. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so that's been a, that's been cool. Uh, how did you land on this style? of, of farming. Yeah. Well, so where we are, we're in a pretty remote part of Northern California, um, that, uh, it's Siskiyou County, um, you know, about 45,000 residents in Siskiyou County. So there's not a big population center to do a lot of direct to consumer marketing. So there's some farmer's markets and other things, but, um, I started working up there, um, at a kid's camp, um, called Kidder Creek. And so I was there, um, for a few years before Jen and I got married. And then we, we started seeing the wheels turn on this ranch idea and, and dream. And so, um, so, so when I, when we first started Rockside, I went to work for a cattle ranch that's, uh, just down the road from us and they were doing a lot of direct to consumer. And so as we interacted with people, they were saying, Hey, there's, there's great beef around here. Do you know of any chicken or any pork? Mm. And so what everybody had been asking us when we bought a hundred acres of land is what on earth can you possibly do with a hundred acres of land? Mm-hmm. And, uh, it turns out you can run a lot of pigs and uh, quite a few chickens on, on a hundred acres. So it really fit both the, the market demand at the time and also the size of our, of our pasture and our land, um, to run, uh, these animals that weren't really, uh, being run up there at the yeah. time. I heard this quote the other day, uh, the, you know, we all know the, the quote, a jack of all trades, a master of none. Yeah. Um, but then the rest of the quote that many people don't hear is, uh, better than a master of one is, (laughs) you know, and I think that in, in agriculture, we have, we have become masters of one, uh, one, one task, you know, beef, we produce beef, we produce, produce corn and soybeans, we produce, you know, whatever. And I was just sitting around a table on a, on a Wednesday night um, with, a, with a guy here at church one night. And he said, you know, when I left to go to Korea, to go to the to mm-hmm. Korean War, he said, everybody had chickens, hogs, cows, a, a milk cow. Uh, they were, you know, on a five to seven year crop rotation, mm-hmm. you know, and this is in the 50s. Mm-hmm. And then he said, and by the time I got back from the surface... It was all corn and soybeans, mm. and this was in Iowa. Okay, you know, and and that was kind of be, would become indicative of the rest of of the of the agriculture in in America. And I think that you know that model, like you you said, you're just meeting a market demand, but that model um, of reintegrating uh, a diverse uh, set of species mm-hmm. is is a model. You know, we're leaving a lot of money on the table by not having a chicken on every acre of yeah. of farm and ranch land in america we're leaving a lot of money on the table by not having a pig on the acres they're suited for you know especially those forested acres you know and so i i think that there is a lot of a lot of opportunity would you ever see uh something like this being sustainable on the on the money it could produce from the agricultural enterprises or is it always going to take some some investment out from the outside yeah yeah, it's a good question, and it's something that at the beginning, that was our plan, was to say, no, the farm's going to support the ministry. But then we realized that the whole model of ministry is taking somebody who, at the time, is not employable, getting them to a point as quickly as possible where they are, and then sending them off and helping them find a job. And so so we realized, uh, at the be- so at the very beginning, we were a for-profit farm, and then we said, okay, we probably should start a nonprofit ministry. And then we quickly, in uh, about three years later, decided, you know what? We need to have everything from the for-profit absorbed into the nonprofit. For us, it was a question of, you know, who's driving this this train? You know, and uh, is it the farm that's driving the cha- train? And if it is, then we aren't going to have time for mm. every crisis that comes up every day. And we're going to have to say, you know what, we're going to talk about that later. Let's get back to work. Sometimes we do that anyway, mm-hmm. because it's the best. Um, but when the ministry is driving the train, then the farm is really the venue 
for life change. And we can flex a lot more to meet specific demands and needs of the students. And that's really what we're there for. And so um, is it possible? Yeah, I do think it's possible. It's, uh, it's even more possible in the second phase of the program. So after they get the restoration program, then they can graduate into the workforce program. And this, so, so just, you know, a quick overview that the, the restoration program focuses on mental health. So stabilizing mental health, sobriety, and job and life skills. And so once, once they've gone through that restoration program, we haven't done our job if they're not hireable. So mm-hmm. they, they need to be hireable. And, uh, and we line, we make sure that they have a job lined up before they leave. So they can choose to go on within the, under the umbrella of Rockside into the workforce program as an independent uh, adult. So when they come to Rockside, they choose to, to lay down their cell phone, um, their laptop, their headphones, you know, for eight months and go all in on life restoration. Um, they can choose to stay in the workforce program for up to four more years after they graduate, but they're fully independent. So they have their car, they've got their cell phone, they're, they're living their life, but they're getting that housing, employment, and the community support that is so important to continued success. So, um, so once they are hireable and once they've graduated from the, the ranch restoration program, for them to go on and, and work for a farm that is for profit and, and uh, is, is a great fit. Along those lines, just first real quick, I wanted to say um, one of the things that really stood out to me is what Craig said about they never take focus off the, off the priority, that it's the ministry to the men, not the production of the, of the farm. Mm-hmm. And so they're always reminding themselves, remember, we're here to minister to men and we're using the farm as a tool for that. And then, what I've seen in Craig in the Rockside Ranch model that is just amazing is the follow through, the pathways, creating pathways that, hey, if this is really the life you want to live, here's a pathway for you to live that life. And they've already been doing it, but they stay in contact and they want to continually stay in contact. So we've even been talking about an alumni association where we never break fellowship. You know, it doesn't matter where you live or where you go on to. Give, keep us updated. Tell us what's going on. Keep us informed. You know, stay in contact with us. So, because a lot of treatment programs I've seen, you graduate and you're back in the yeah. world, and they just don't have the capacity to stay in relationship with you. And I think that's where I've seen myself. A lot of men struggle is they go back to the same neighborhoods, the same friends, doing the same things, and then they're back in treatment before you know it, or in a worse situation than they were before. So, this is a clear pathway. This this ranch model then the workforce program, and then an alumni association that says, uh, we want to stay in contact with you for life if, if you want to stay in contact with us. Mm-hmm. I, I, got a, I got so many more questions, but we're short on time here. But what is what success look like for you in the life of these guys? Yeah. So our big goals for them are that, uh, that they would be employable day one. As soon as they graduate, they've got a job lined up. Um, of course, we want to see them continue to live a sober life. Um, but our ultimate goal is that they have grown closer to Jesus while they've been at the ranch. So all of the all of the the other things are important for their success in their life, but their eternal success, right? Their eternal um, their eternal relationship with God is what we are hoping is cultivated more than anything else over the eight months. So Craig's getting ready to cash it in for the day. Uh, what is a, a day that you look back on and say, that was a good day? What, what does it look like? What are some of the things that have happened in that day that make you th- thankful to be part of, of the, the ministry? Yeah. So I think that a, a day with a lot of good, healthy conflict um, is a day that I look back on and think, man, that was a good day. Um, it might sound weird, but you know, it's kind of like when you're moving animals, you know, that there's that pressure, mm. right? Without pressure, the animals aren't going anywhere. Um, but without a release, they're going to bust out of the fences. And, uh, and so, so, you know, that's how, that's how I've been challenged to grow in my life is that I've had people who've come around me, who've pressured me to say, Hey, you know, 
either, hey, this is a this is a warning flag that I don't really like what I'm seeing here, so you should look at this, or hey, I really think that you can grow in this area, and I want to walk with you through it. Um, and that involves conflict, right? It is it's life on life. It is uh, day in and day out. It's relationships. It's it's not always you know clean and pretty, right? Um, but so when a guy, I think that one of the one of the times that is is pretty often, you know, and pretty common um, that happens is when a guy just pops off at you, you know, and says, says a bunch of stuff. And then you sit there and take it and say, thanks for sharing that with me. You know, let's either take a breather here or let's talk about it. And then they're willing to come back and talk about it. And it's those, it's those conflict points that really, I think, I mean, and it's, there's parallels to farming and everything, right? But it's like, you got to disturb the ground before you're going to see new growth. Mm -hmm. And so as that ground is disturbed, the ground is going, ouch, you know, what's going on? But that's just like us, right? It's um, that, that kind of promotion that needs to take place that, that um, um, takes place before there's new growth. And so I've really come to love that, that healthy conflict and not try to provoke it, you know, every day and poke people. But when it comes is to just even stop in the moment and say like, Hey, this is really good. Like, it's really good that you're telling me these things. It's really good that you are, are being willing to yell at me even, you know? Um, and then we're going to walk through it together. Um, I think that some of the days that I, I look back on and, and, you know, even get emotional about are the ones where a guy did something and assumed that they were going to get kicked out. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so whether they hit a wall or they, you know, like put their fist, fist through a wall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, we haven't had anybody go through one yet, but, uh, but yeah, where they, you know, they did something or they threatened somebody, you know, in a, in a way mm -hmm. our, our, one of our rules is that you can't be at the ranch if you're a physical safety th risk to yourself or others. Um, but sometimes a guy will make a comment here or there that it crosses the line, but isn't way over the line. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when they just assume, all right, I'm getting kicked out. And then when we go and sit down with them and say, we're not kicking you out. Mm. Do you want to be here? And are you ready to go make that right? Mm. And they say, yes. Mm. I got all the time in the world for mm. that. Mm. You know, it's, it's pressure and release, right? Yeah. I mean, like you're talking about, they, they are, they're putting pressure on you. Mm -hmm. And then when they, when they back that pressure off and realize he doesn't, reciprocate yes he doesn't come back at me he doesn't kick me out mm -hmm. they're starting just like a cow that's been had bad training mm -hmm. in pressure and release mm -hmm. you know they're starting to learn oh these are this is a different breed of person you know yes. i mean that's <laughs> hopefully that's what yeah. jesus came to do right to yeah. Yeah. give us a new way to be human right and mm -hmm. a, that's right a, a new old way <laughs> to mm -hmm. be human and so yeah that's that's really cool so again we could we could do this a lot longer but i do want to make sure that we don't we don't like go without getting answers to a couple of questions first of all how can somebody get involved uh, financially somebody wants to leave their nets and come can come work with rockside ranch how can they do that so yeah. let's answer those two questions first yeah so i mean thanks for asking that the the best way would be to send an email to me my email address is craig c-r-a-i-g at rockside ranch.org um our website is rockside ranch.org and so you know feel free to go on there it's been um unbelievably amazing to me to see how many people have have come to support this ministry and literally make it possible um through through donations there's a there's a way to give on our website and um and i think that the the most beautiful thing about that is that it is it's the body of christ at work you know mm -hmm. that we as a staff at the ranch know this literally would not be possible without so many other people um, coming alongside us. And so the people that give, the people who uh, volunteer, the people who pray and and share about the ministry, refer students, every single one of those people is being used by God to restore lives. And so, yeah, our website is kind of the hub for all of that. And, uh, and then, yeah, feel free to send me an email personally. Sure. And the the replication piece i mean um i think we're maybe a little early on that uh to to give many specifics but what is what's 
what's next um what do you need to make that if you if you do land on this place that you're looking at what what are some of the immediate needs that are going to be there to to help that go are you going to need staff more than what you've got interested already or are you going to be able to make it work with who you have interested in already yeah so we will need a few more staff in order to make this new um site work and uh so we have we have short-term and long-term staffing positions so um short term would be you know a single guy who wants to live in the house with the students for the for the eight months and um so those are called program leads and they're more internship level positions where that's a high intensity position and so it's short term Mm. and then um if there's any anyone who would be interested in more of a long-term position i mean there's as we kind of build capacity, there's just, I, I would have never guessed that we would have had this many staff that we have right now. And, uh, and so as we build capacity and kind of venture into new areas, there's going to be more and more staff positions. Mm. And the staff that we have right now is outstanding. I mean, just phenomenal. And I think that that is one of the biggest uh, reasons that the guys, A, trust the program, um, but B, the, that they have long-term success is that, I mean, I staff come in every day and say, I was just on the phone with this guy who graduated months and months ago, you know? And so those relationships just continue. And so it's a, like I said, it's a high intensity job, but if it's a job that, you know, you're interested in, somebody is interested in, um, then I guarantee you the reward is, is, uh, is f- well worth it. Yeah. So I've been in pastoral ministry for, almost 15 years now. And I say uh, the pay ain't great, but the rewards are out of this world. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, I got one more follow-up question on that. Um, and I don't, this, this is going to sound weird no matter how I phrase it. So I'll just say it the way it came to my mind. Is there a, a resume that somebody would be trying to build that Rockside ranch would be a good mm-hmm. internship place to go and, and get some of those? Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good question. So pastoral ministry, mm-hmm. any sort of counseling ministry, social work, um, all of those types of fields, I mean, this is boots on the ground, mm-hmm. right? I mean, living in the same house with the students day in, day out. Um, the program leads are primarily the ones who are there in the evenings w- with the guys during their evening mm-hmm. session. And then on the weekends, they go out and take the guys on adventures and excursions. So um, we've been really really benefited by the fact that we're down the road from this adventure camp um, because at the end of the summer, we are able to go and ask any of those guys if they're interested in Mm. coming on staff at Rockside and they're a great fit. So, you know, if you've been a camp counselor and, uh, and you enjoy that, it's a pretty good segue to come and be a program lead. Um, And do you, would somebody be able to have a nine to five and then come and be a program lead in the evenings and the weekends? We have had guys who've had jobs offsite. And it, it does work, but, uh, it's one of those things where we want to talk to them ahead of time and say, you know, normally your weekends are for rest and <laughs> rejuvenation. Are you sure you want to give up sure. your weekends to a very intense, yeah, you know, absolutely. uh, calling here? So uh, I just, <clears throat> excuse me. I just wanted to add too that. I think it's really good for somebody that wants to learn about regenerative agriculture or holistic management. And, you know, you're doing ministry in agriculture. Mm. So it's, it, it, if it's that person that wants to have that opportunity, yeah. There's so many people that don't know where their food comes from or mm-hmm. how things work, yeah. and you could do you could learn a lot of both yeah. in, in a setting like this. And yep. the, the second thing would be if you ever want to be a parent, this is great, <laughs> great hands-on experience. You know, yeah, so. absolutely. No, my wife and I have been involved heavily involved in Farm Bureau, yeah. uh, and you know, at the state level, anyways, and and all the way to the top of that organization, even on the national level. Um, the name of Jesus is mentioned often, the name of every prayer. First of all, the meetings are opened and closed in prayer. The meals are, are opened in prayer. All those prayers are in the name of Jesus at the end. Mm-hmm. You know, um, And I, I think a lot of that goes back to a connection to the land mm-hmm. will generally foster a connection to Jesus mm-hmm. you know for a multitude of reasons not the least of which is you there are very few steps between you and God's provision like you need that rain you know you need you need him to to do the things that he designed this world to do uh so that you can continue to survive whereas the guy that just 
goes to the grocery store and throws lettuce in the cart, you know, he doesn't, the, there's a lot of steps yes. there. And that's that chain. There's always lettuce at the cart. There isn't always grass in the pasture, yeah. you know, and sometimes there's, there's a hiccup in that cart, but the, the chain is big enough that, that, that supply chain is never almost never broken. I mean, COVID tested that a little bit, but, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, and it, and it did foster that curiosity for a lot of people. Where does my food come from? But anyways, I, I think like, like we've said multiple times, uh, that, that agriculture is just a perfect deal for this. So, yeah. uh, we got to let you guys go. Anything we missed, any big major nuggets that you wanted to talk about or any, anything that, yeah, I don't think so. Um, you know, the but the the only other thing would be, you know, if anybody's ever interested in coming out to the ranch, we love to have visitors, yeah. and so uh, we're in a in a place in California that's on the way to nowhere. So, uh, so if you ever want to make it a, a destination, you know, trip, um, give us a call. Yeah, it's on my bucket list to be there for a Tuesday night community dinner sometime mm. with my family. So. Every week, you're always welcome. <laughs> I'll let you know before I show up. Good deal. <laughs> Well, uh, Craig and Gordon, thanks for your time today. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really excited about that. The show notes page for today is workingcows.net slash 190. Workingcows.net slash 190 is the show notes page for today. So there will be links to Rockside Ranch and to uh, some videos that they've produced and a little bit more about that and how you can get involved. So pretty, pretty neat opportunity. I uh, would encourage you to, to pray for them and, and their ministry and their, their endeavors and to uh, partner with them if you feel so led, whether that's uh, getting involved at one of the ranches or um, partnering with them financially. And there will be links for all of that at the show notes page for today, workingcows.net slash 190. Coming up next week on the podcast, we'll be talking with Leanne and Chelsea Schaefer. Uh, they are fifth and sixth generation on a farm, uh, feedlot, cow, calf, uh, dealership, feed dealership in central North Dakota. And we're going to talk to them, uh, just about, you know, the complexity of, uh, managing a, uh, generational ranch and, and some of the, how they're in, incorporating new technology, uh, like performance beef and how that's helped them be sp- successful. So look forward to that coming up next week on the Working Cows podcast. We'll see you then. We invite you to visit workingcows.net to subscribe to the show via iTunes or Stitcher. You'll also find detailed show notes pages, resources from our guests, and the industry leaders who have influenced them. For more ideas on putting your cows to work for you in a more profitable way, tune in next week.